Jesus said to Nicodemus, Marvel not that I said unto thee, singular, ye must be born again. He changed it to plural. I'm telling you that everybody must be born again. That's a really important distinction. Otherwise, he'd be saying, Nicodemus, I'm telling you that you've got to be born again. Well, how does that apply to Kent Hovind? It wouldn't apply. The fact is, it's very precise in the King James. So we can talk all day about that. We'll cover more in our college class. I think the whole concept you need to get in your head is, God promised he would preserve his word, so where is it? I would like to hold a copy of it. And after 30-some years, I was slowly dragged, kicking and screaming, screaming into the King James camp. God preserved his word for in English, and we've got it. A couple of verses really attract my attention because of I speak, my speaking on creation all the time. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 9. King James says, To make all men see what is the mystery, the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. There are two important phrases here. It says, from the beginning of the world. That's a definite time. He created things by Jesus Christ. Colossians 1 says the same thing. Jesus created all things. Jesus is God in the flesh. Well, a lot of these new Bible versions uh, come from the Alexandrian, and they did not believe Jesus was God in the flesh. And they, bookstores, of course, want to sell lots of Bibles, love of money, root of all evil, and they don't want to offend anybody. So, hey, let's sell a Bible version that doesn't offend people. So look what they did with Ephesians 3.9. Which for ages past was kept hidden in God who created all things. Well, they left off Jesus. You don't want to offend people, you know. And they made it ages past instead of from the beginning. Nearly all the new Bible versions have changed it to say ages, ages, ages. And they leave off Jesus in every case, except for the new King James. They left Jesus in there, but they still call it ages past. That's the only one I could find that left Jesus in there, but they all changed it to ages. They don't want to get this definite six-day, you know, young earth creationist because they might offend people and, again, lose money. Now, we could spend hours on the different uh, problems with these verses. The last one that bothers me is... Is it the first day in Genesis 1-5, or is it one day? Every version that I found says one day. King James says the first day. Why would they change it to one day? Well, again, they're trying to allow for the long periods of time. And I don't understand how somebody can read Genesis 1-5 and still believe there's a gap between verse 1 and 2 of any amount of time, more than an hour. The first day. It couldn't be more clear. All right, I want to do a little video here about this New World Translation, kind of as a um, another witness, along with uh, Brother James there from Ex Catholics for Christ. And this is my copy of the New World Translation. I just want to show you a verse here very quickly. Uh, I'm going to compare it to the King James Bible, of course, King James Version. This is uh, 2 Timothy. Let me zoom in here a little bit. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24. Let's see if I can get to it here. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. Now look at the uh, Jehovah's Witness, New World Translation. But a slave of the Lord does not need to fight, but needs to be gentle toward all, qualified to teach Keeping himself restrained under evil. Wow, look at that. So you should keep yourself restrained under evil if you're a Jehovah's Witness. Well, which of course is exactly what will happen if you stay as a Jehovah's Witness. You will be restrained under evil. But now, I just want to show you a couple things here quick. Let me zoom back out a little bit. Um, I had some Jehovah's Witnesses come to my door the one time. And I have something here that uh, kind of shocked them. This is a Greek text put out by the Watchtower uh, Bible and Tract Society. Again, I'm going to need to zoom in here a little bit. You can see right there, Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania. And these Catholics came to my door and I said to them, uh, can you please tell me who the Jesuits are? Well, they didn't know. They had no idea. And I explained to them what the Jesuits were and, and uh, exactly what they do. 
And then I showed them this page from their publication where they talk about the Greek text. And it says the Greek text that we have used as the basis for the New World Translation is the widely accepted Westcott and Hort text of 1881 by reason of its acknowledged excellence. Yeah, maybe among apostates. But we have also taken into consideration other texts, including those prepared by D. Eberhard Nessel, the Spanish Jesuit scholar Jose Maria Bover, and another Jesuit scholar, A. Merck. The UBS text of 1975 and the Nesselon text of 1979 were consulted to update the critical apparatus of this edition. Now I kind of found that to be very interesting that the Jehovah's Witnesses admit openly that this text is put together by Jesuits. And the Nestle's text also is a Roman Catholic text. And it, you know, you go through this thing and many, many places, like right here, we have in the book of Revelation. Let me zoom in again. Here you have the Greek over here, which is a corrupt Greek, but still. And you have the word for Lord, and yet they translate it Jehovah. Right there, they, I mean, I don't know how as a Jehovah's Witness you could look at this and, and feel good about your translation. I mean, they're admitting it in their own publication. And it's all over the place in this thing. I'll show you one more here quick before I move on. Here you have it again, Lord, and they write it Jehovah. That's a mistranslation. But while I'm on the subject of Nestle's text, I just want to show you something else. This is a Nestle's 27th edition. Again, I have to zoom in here so you can see it. 27th edition, this is the latest one. And here you have, uh, oh, focus, page 45 in the introduction. And if you look down here, it says the text shared by these two editions was adopted internationally by Bible society, excuse me, societies and following an agreement between the Vatican and the United Bible Societies, it has served as the basis for new translations and for revisions made under their supervision. So you have the Vatican behind this Nestle's 27th edition. Now let me show you something else. Here is a New American Bible, the New Catholic Translation. Zoom back in here. In general, Nestle Alon's Novum Testamentum uh, well, the Greek text there, the 25th edition, 1963, was followed. Additional help was derived from the Greek New Testament, Alon Black Metzger Whit Green, produced for the use of translators by the United Bible Societies in 1966. So you have Jehovah's Witnesses using the Nestle's text, the Roman Catholics using the Nestle's text, and how about this book here, the NIV, The Making of a Contemporary Translation by Kenneth Barker. Chapter 4, page 53. What Greek text was used by the translators of the NIV New Testament? It was basically that found in the United Bible Societies and Nestle's printed Greek New Testaments, which contained the latest and best Greek, Greek text available. Again, they're lying. It's not the best Greek text. But over here, the very next, well, two pages later, uh, they're talking about the two supposed oldest best uh, manuscripts. And it's the one is Codex Vaticanus because it is held in the Vatican Library at Rome. Kind of a funny place to go to to get your Bible if you are a Christian or, you know, a Protestant, if you want to be called that. Codex Sinaiticus is now in the British Museum. Two Roman Catholic manuscripts, essentially, which you can't just go over there as a Christian and say, hey, I'd like to see that. They won't let you. So, Jehovah's Witness, Catholic, 
and NIV, all coming from the same corrupt Greek text. Now, if you have a new version, chances are that's where it's coming from. But how about the New King James Version with your occult three-pointed star there? Well, you go through the New Testament pretty much anywhere. I just flipped it open here to John chapters 9 and 10. And right down there at my finger, at my thumb, NU text reads, Son of Man. Well, what's the NU text? Well, let's go to the preface here. Sorry about that, couldn't find it right away. NU text. These variations from the traditional text generally represent the Alexandrian or Egyptian type of text described previously in the New Testament text. This text is published in the 26th edition of the Nestle Alan Greek New Testament and in the United Bible Society's third edition, hence the acronym NU text. You see, pretty much any Bible produced since 1881 is going to come from this, okay, or refer to it like the New King James Version does. This is not a King James Bible. This is a counterfeit. Okay, that's a lie. It's not a New King James. It's just another Alexandrian Egyptian Bible. And you can compare an NIV or the Catholic Bible or even Jehovah's Witness Bible, and you'll see in many key doctrinal verses, they'll read just the same as the New King James Version. So what should you do about it? Well, you can either have this text, or you can have this one. This is the true text here. This is Stephen's, I believe, fifth edition, known as the Textus Receptus today. Okay, this is the one that comes from Antioch, where the disciples were called Christians first, Acts chapter 11, verse 26. This one is based on well over 95% of the extant Greek manuscripts that we have today. This is the true text. And if you are a Jehovah's Witness, and you're relying on this ridiculous thing, first of all, the first thing you need to do is get rid of this. You need to get a King James Version and uh, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because He is God manifest in the flesh. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching.